Welcome to Jewish Historical Society of Michigan's new exhibit, In the Neighborhood, Everyday Life on Hastings Street. Today we're gonna to be talking to several people who have objects in the exhibit and hear the stories behind their objects. Let's begin. I have my mother's wedding dress, my father's boutonniere, and I have their kachuba, the Jewish marriage license. I have their Michigan marriage license. It's almost a simple dress underneath, but what was over it, it was just very pretty and lovely material. And the cap was lace and had little flowers. They were just very warm, loving people. And that's my favorite thing about them. I have a picture here of my grandmother Rose. She was the oldest of the Boeskis that came um, in 1913. And these are her five brothers. All five of them worked together at uh, the Boeski Brothers Deli. Then Harry branched out and he had Boeskis. Bill had the brass rails, there were three of them. And Sam had derbies. When you think that they came in 1913 and the restaurants started in the 17 or 18, that they were just here for immigrants for five years and were able to become part of the fabric of the community. Eating is a big part of Jewish life and Jewish culture and they were keeping it going and uh, providing uh, special memories of the home country and, and Jewish foods. And I think that's a special gift that they gave. Sometime in the early 30s, my grandfather purchased one of the Boeski delis. So this is the original ledger from the deli. And when he purchased it, they changed the name to the Farnsworth Deli. So it starts sometime in 1931. There's business being done with many of the names of the people who are in the exhibit. So it's kind of an interesting record of, of what was there. Everything that went to support them, the butchers, the beverage companies, the bakers, plus all the expenses that went into running a restaurant. My grandfather was a quiet talent. He painted signs until he was probably in his 80s. I've had this picture of my grandfather, and sure enough, we found out that it was Hastings Street. It's nice to kind of honor my grandfather in that way. My Zadie was an interesting character, that's all I could say. The object in the museum is a dob kit that belonged to my father-in-law, Morris Weiner. He was very patriotic and enlisted in the army when World War I broke out. They served in Siberia. And in fact, they were iced in, and he was not returned to Michigan until a year after the war was over. You can see his brush. There is a razor. Soap's still there. <laughs> and then these are his dog tags that say, Morris Weiner, USA. So he served from early 1914 uh, until 1919 before he got home. These are my paternal great-grandparents, Pauline and Abraham Caro. They made their way to Detroit and they purchased a movie theater in the mid-teens. In the mid-20s, they sold the theater, but they kept the projector. And my father, who was a history student, already felt that this was part of Detroit Jewish history. So my father took his grandmother and the projector here to the Detroit Historical Museum, and it's been here ever since. Photo number one is my mom, Rachel. She was born in uh, 1927, so she'd be about one year in this picture, and lived in this Hastings area. The two objects were always in display in my mom's house. She had the baby rattle and a teething ring. They always said that was hers. My family's all tied into this area, both my father and my mother on both sides. And now I can see through their Sanborn maps and everything interacted, how close both my sides were in living, even though they may not known each other in 1920. They were just blocks away from each other. This tefillin belonged to my Zadie. He was born in 1890. He brought it here from Russia. 
I have here a mezuzah that came from my Bobby and Zadie's house. So I believe that this came from their first home in Detroit. And then I also have two Haggadahs, one from 1912 and one from 1920. I have a prayer book from my great-grandfather. He came in 1923 and that came with him. And then this is Tzitzi and the Tzitzi bag that my father wore. My father was born in 1916 and we imagine that he wore it um, at the age of about 10. That's how it's worn. And then they wear their shirts over it and the tzitzis are hanging down. Several years ago, I got a call from the Thumb region of Michigan, from the Bay Saginaw area, from this um, teacher who told me that he bought a box of trophies and he, as a hobby, was going to try to find the rightful owners, old trophies. He saw the, the word the Vitor Duck, he Googled it, and he called me. This trophy was presented by the David Horducker Independent Lady Society to the David Horducker Unterverein on their 20th anniversary in January of 1929. So we had no idea until that point that the men's organization was founded in 1909. That teacher sent us back the trophy and now it is a very treasured item in our, for our organization. The Semivar was a gift from my grandfather, Harry Lurie, to my grandmother. This is the curing of its day, meaning you put water into it, into a central chimney, you put ignitable material. They put a teapot on it, and then it warms up the tea. During World War I, the Semivar was buried because they were afraid of looting uh, by soldiers and so forth. It came from grandparents to my mother and the house we grew up in and then to our home. That it just is something we're very proud of and the direct connection to our past. This item here is my great-grandfather's retirement watch, presented to Harry Glixman on his 36th anniversary at Ford Motor Company, presented by Henry Ford II, with Henry Ford's signature at the bottom. When Etzel Ford commissioned Diego Rivera to draw the mural, he was walking through the Ford Motor plant and he met my great-grandfather. And he asked if he may sketch him. And for some reason, he took a liking to my great-grandfather and my great-grandfather ended up center stage. We hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at some of the objects in this exhibit. To learn more, visit our website at jhsmichigan.org. See you in the neighborhood.